So do you either need to be able to blur out a specific part of an image, for example, a particular subject, or do you need to be able to add extra depth of field to your image? Well, if either of those two cases apply to you, then what you want to do is use the Gaussian filter in Adobe Photoshop. And that's what we're going to be learning in this video. Okay, cool. So as you can see, I've already got Photoshop open. I've got my image right here, which I want to be able to apply Gaussian blur to. Now, like anything in Adobe Photoshop, obviously we want to do this process in a non-destructive way. So we can always go back in case we make a mistake in the future. So the easiest way to do this and to be able to protect our image is to convert it to a smart object layer first. So as you can see at the moment, I've just got one layer, but if you have multiple layers, this will also work. Just make sure you select all of them. So with my layer selected in the layers panel, I'll just quickly right click on the layer and then go to convert to smart object. Now mine's already actually been converted to smart object. And the easy way to be able to identify this is that the layer thumbnail has already changed. So as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, you have a small icon, which suggests that it is a smart object. So great, we have our smart object and now we're ready to apply our Gaussian blur. So the Gaussian blur is a filter and it basically uses a mathematical equation in order to calculate the blur of your image. Now, obviously all of that information is totally irrelevant if you don't know how to be able to use it. And don't worry, you don't actually have to start using any equations to apply it. So the easiest way to apply it, because it is a filter, we go to the filter option at the top in the menu here. And as you can see, if we go to blur and then Gaussian blur right here, this is the option that we want. As you can see, our image has already automatically changed because the moment you press on the filter, the Gaussian blur is applied. But as you can see, we've also got a new window box right here. And this basically allows us to customize the Gaussian blur. So obviously the only parameter we can change is the radius of our blur, which basically corresponds to the intensity of our blur. So if I go all the way to zero or 0 0.1, which is the closest we can get, the intensity of the blur is far, far less. If I drag the slider all the way to the right, obviously the maximum amount of blur is applied. So obviously the amount of blur you apply varies from image to image. Might increase it slightly more just for this example to make it more exaggerated, as you can see. If you're wondering why the cursor looks like a square, if you just press anywhere on your image, the preview on the Gaussian blur window actually changes. And if you actually hold on the preview, you can see the original image underneath. You can also use these two buttons right here. So the zoom out in order to zoom out and zoom in on the preview itself. But anyway, once you're happy with how the Gaussian blur looks on your image, all you have to do is press OK. And as you can see, this basically applies the Gaussian blur as a smart filter to your smart object. And this wouldn't be the case if you had a normal rasterized layer. Basically, you wouldn't have the option to go back and edit it in the future. So if at any point you're actually unhappy with the amount of blur that you have applied, all you have to do is double click on the filter itself, so the Gaussian blur. And as you can see, this reopens the window and actually allows you to make any further changes. So this can be a great way to be able to apply more depth of field to your image, but obviously only if it doesn't also affect your subject. Now, the easiest way to be able to actually change where you apply the blur to in your image. So for example, if you are targeting a specific area or a specific subject, then basically what you can do is affect the smart filter mask. So as you can see under our layers, we have the smart filters option here and the white square basically represents a mask. So if I invert the mask by just pressing command and I or control and I for windows, as you can see, the blur is no longer applied. And then what we can do is change the brush tool just by using the shortcut on our keyboard, which is the letter B. And that's both for Windows and Mac. And just making sure we have white selected as our foreground color. What we can essentially do is go ahead and actually color in the parts that we want to apply blur to. And this is only possible because I'm making sure that the mask thumbnail is actually selected and not the layer thumbnail itself. If you do this, you're actually going to end up drawing on your object. In this case, because we have a smart object, we won't actually be able to do anything. So just make sure you always have the mask thumbnail selected like so. And then you can basically go ahead and color in which parts of your image have blur applied. Obviously, if you want to do the opposite, just make sure you have black selected as your foreground color and then go ahead and actually undo those parts that you want. So for example, if I quickly undo that a few times, if I only want to apply it to this yellow surface here, I just make sure that white is selected on my foreground color by pressing X on my keyboard. And as you can see, I can just quickly paint in that area and blur out just that section. Great, so that's how we apply and target Gaussian blur in Adobe Photoshop. If you're interested in learning how you can actually pixelate images in Adobe Photoshop, then do check out the video in the top right hand corner of the end screen. 
And otherwise, do remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and do remember to subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a new Photoshop or Illustrator tutorial.